Hey booktube! Here are some recommendations for Valentine's Day reading. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and I am a huge romance lover. I am all about falling in love and what better time to read about it than Valentine's Day. So in light of that, Michaela Eve and I of Mich love Michaela Eve. She is one of my dearest friends. And we decided to do a collab video and maybe just uh, give you some recommendations for really sweet romances to read around Valentine's Day. I'm going to talk about new adult releases. Um, she's going to talk about young adult releases. and. These aren't new releases. These are just authors I've read, books I've read that I can recommend to you and tell you that I like them and here's why. I will say that there is a somewhat of a distinction. There is an actual distinction between young adult and new adult, but sometimes it can be confusing and, and sometimes the line gets kind of blurry. New adult is really more people in their 20s. They're often in college, so a lot of college romances will be new adult. They tend to be a little more mature because people at that age tend to behave a little more maturely than people in their late teens, which is what young adult romance would be about. Um, so, you know, there's a little of that. There's a lot of people figuring out their life, getting to the end of college, and what am I going to do, and that kind of thing. So a lot of those kinds of issues are discussed and addressed and all that kind of thing, but I've got some great recommendations for you, so let me just tell you about some of them. I'm going to start with Unteachable by Leah Rader. This is the old trope of the teacher who falls in love with the student or the student who falls in love with the teacher, but it's done in a kind of a refreshing way. I don't know how many ways you can tell that story really, but I really liked this one because I thought it was so beautifully written. It uh, really reveals a lot about um, the culture of teenagers today, seniors in high school, people, you know, kids who've come from a bad home life or have a lot of challenges to meet before they can really embrace their dreams. And so this is really good. It's a couple of damaged people fighting their way through and finding each other in the process, and I loved it. I gave it five stars when I read it a couple of years ago and just reread it again this past year. Uh, I listened to it on audio and I gave it five stars again because I just think, you know, for everything it is not, it is beautifully written. It's just the commentary is fantastic. Colleen Hoover is one of my favorite new adult authors and I haven't loved everything she's written, but I've loved a lot of it, probably most of it. One of my favorites is November 9, and on audio, this is narrated by Zachary Weber and Angela Gothels, and it is a story of a boy and a girl, and they meet right as their lives are starting to take off, and they decide it's too early to get into a relationship. So let's meet back here on the same day, once a year for the next five years, and we'll just see what happens. We'll see how our lives change and whether or not we still want to be in a relationship together. So it's that story and it's just so good. There are other things involved in it and like I say, that plot twist that gets thrown in at the end, it just really rounds out the story, but I loved that one. I thought it was really well written and a great story, great characters, well developed. The pacing was great, it moved along, you never got bored, you were always anxious to find out what happened. Because in the book, Colleen Hoover doesn't spend a lot of time uh, talking about what's happened during the year. She focuses in on the days that they come together, and it's always on November 9th, so that was one of my favorites. Ugly Love is another favorite, and that's narrated by Grace Grant and Deacon Lee, and that's an interesting story about an airline pilot who he's got issues, and a girl that is the younger sister of a friend of his, and they get involved, and it's the story of their relationship. And that one frustrated me, but I think that that's one of the good things about the book. You know, that tension that she developed and brought it full circle, it just really, really gave the ending a big finish, you know. Another favorite I have is Maybe Not, and that's just a novella that goes along with Maybe Someday, which is another book she's written. Maybe Not is narrated by Jason Carpenter, and it focuses in on a side character from Maybe Someday. 
and he is hilarious. He is absolutely hilarious. And the whole little novella is just fall on the floor laughing funny. It's, it's so good. So definitely Colleen Hoover is someone to check out for new adult. Tamara Weber is another favorite author of mine. I really love the new adult series that she's written called Contours of the Heart. And that is Easy, which is narrated by Tara Sands. Breakable, which is narrated by Zachary Weber, and it is kind of a companion book to Easy. It's the same story, but told from the guy's perspective rather than the girl's. And then Sweet is book three in that series, and that's narrated by Zach Weber and Christy Romano. And Zach Weber is her son, is Tamara Weber's son. So it's kind of, kind of nice. I'm not sure how I would feel having my son narrate my new adult book with the mature content in it. I don't know. But this is a great series. If you are looking at new adult as something you might want to try, uh, it's just uh, people in college as they're kind of coming into their own and easy and breakable deal with uh, assault and uh, some of the things associated with that. There's some great scenes with women learning to defend themselves in it. It's a story that's well told and Tamara Weber is just an underrated author. And, you know, I wish more people would read her books because she writes really good ones. I happened to be on Twitter one evening and a tweet popped up from Julie Cross and she said, hey, would anyone like to beta read a story for me? And I, I never met Julie Cross and she didn't know me from Adam, but I tweeted her back and I said, well, I will if you just need somebody to read it. And so she sent me third degree and this is not available on audio, but it was such a pleasure to get to read. It is really, really well done. I love Julie Cross as an author. I think she's, she's another underrated author. And this is a story of a girl who has uh, borderline Asperger's syndrome. She's a prodigy and she's a doctor, but uh, her, her teachers basically tell her that she doesn't have an, any kind of an emotional connection to her patients. And so she needs to develop that. And so she needs to take some time off. And so she goes back to college and has college experience. And it's so funny. It is the funniest book because this girl is aware that she doesn't deal well with social situations and she will catch herself talking and talking and talking. <laughs> just just the situations that she finds herself in are hilarious. Not in a way that make fun of her, but in a way where she's saying, I'm doing this completely wrong. I'm just, I'm doing this completely wrong. How can I fix this? And the people around her who really see her for who she really is and the way that that emotional side begins to come out and really impact her life. It's a great story with a great ending too. Trade Me by Courtney Milan is a story that is really good for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's got economic diversity in it. It's got two people from opposite ends of the economic spectrum. One girl is, she's not poverty stricken, but she has to work really hard to get through school. And another guy is like the son of like Steve Jobs. Like, you know, he's about to inherit a big corporation that does, makes phones and electronics and that kind of thing. And they trade places. And the other thing about it is that she is Asian and her parents uh, help immigrants come into this country and find sponsors and do a lot of that. And so not only she, does she come from a family that really has to work for everything that they have, but they're immigrants. And so I love that aspect of diversity in this novel because I think that uh, he, the love interest, represents kind of the American dream. And then you have the other side of the American dream. And so I loved that. And it's a great, great love story of two people that, you know, she is not going to fall in love with him except, uh-oh, she did. So, yeah, great story written by a, an author who normally writes historical romance. But this is contemporary romance, and I thought it was exceptionally well done. I loved it. If you like sports romance, you might want to try Cora Carmack and her Rusk University series. Her, the first book in that series is all lined up, and I really enjoyed it. It's about football players in college and the girls that they get involved with. She writes a great romance. I loved the way this one developed and had, had football. I like sports romance a lot, and so I really enjoyed it, and I think she's worth checking out as a new adult author. 
The On Dublin Street series by Samantha Young is a great series if you want to get into New Adult. And it's all about people in Scotland. It starts out with an American who moves to Scotland, but then it follows, you know, the peripheral characters book to book, and it's just really well done. And most of the narrators on audio are Scottish. So those books are On Dublin Street, which is narrated by Paula Costello. Until Fountain Bridge is a novella, book 1.5, narrated by Ruth Hopkins. Down London Road is book two, that's narrated by L. Newlands, who does a lot of the books, as you'll see. Book 2.5 is Castle Hill, another novella, narrated by Paula Costello again. I think she was my favorite narrator of all of them. Book three is uh, Before Jamaica Lane, and that's narrated by Lee Angel. Book four is Fall from India Place, and that's narrated by Chloe Lynn. I wasn't a fan of that narrator, and I never have read that book. <laughs> I, uh, the, the main characters, I wasn't a huge fan of, but that doesn't mean anything. It's just another book in the series, and the series is good. So, Book five is Echoes of Scotland Street, again narrated by L. Newlands. Book six is Moonlight on Nightingale Way, L. Newlands narrates. And the last book is One King's Way, and that's narrated by Kieran Murray and L. Niederhorst. Niederhorst? Niederhorst? Um, all really, really good novels with really great characters and a nice change of pace that is set in Scotland and not here in the U.S. And the last one I want to tell you about is called Sincerely Carter. It's by Whitney G., and it's narrated from two points of view by Joseph Disher and Jennifer O'Donnell. I loved this story. This is the classic trope of two kids who live next door to each other, go to the same school, I can't remember, but they hate each other. And they keep writing each other's notes. Dear Arizona, I can't stand you. Sincerely, Carter. Or your, your hair looks like, you know, awful and spiders and, you know, sincerely, Carter. It's hilarious. And then something happens one day in elementary school and they become the best of friends. And so it's that whole we're best friends, now what do we do? Because we find ourselves attracted to each other, and if we act on this, are we going to be able to stay friends? And so it's that whole trope. But it's done really well. It's awfully cute, lovable characters. I really enjoyed it, and so, yeah, that's another one I can recommend. So those are just some suggestions for a taste of some new adult uh, titles that you might want to check out. I'll put some other authors that I really have enjoyed who write new adult down in the description box with some other things. Of course, all the links to the books, because I always do that. And I'm also going to link you up with Michaela and her list of young adult titles for romance for Valentine's Day. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy the list. I hope you try some of these out. And if you've read any of them already, then let me know what you thought. And uh, yeah. Let's jump in and tell everybody else about how great these Valentine's Day romances are. So please go check out Michaela. That's it for now from me, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.